So I want to talk about um, networking and building professional relationships for your, your next step. And so here's a few examples of some of the weird things that I've done, and I'm not encouraging you to follow this path, but just to show you some examples of some things. So uh, many of you guys are working out on Santa Rosa Island. Those of you that aren't working there, you've, you've gone with us on different trips, different locations, and though, that sort of getting out of the initial bubble of school is one of your first, uh, first steps in, in building your networking. So that picture right there of me on the top is one I had <laughs> way more hair, um, but also, uh, if you look, there's almost no white in my eyes. So um, I've blown out all the blood vessels in my eyes and almost went blind um, because of a crazy dive story, I can tell you. And that was when I first went out to be a dive assistant, essentially a field assistant for um, uh, one of my one of, uh, grad students I was working with at the time, who's, who's uh, a good friend of mine. Um, and, th and so the very first, not the very first day, but the very like, second week I was out there, boom, this thing happened, all this crazy stuff happened. It was only luck and I didn't listen to this guy that's supposed to be the medical expert, otherwise I probably would be blind if I'd followed his advice. And, um, and they ended up taking pictures of me for medical textbooks and everything, like, we've never seen an example this bad. How'd you do that, idiot, right? So as a, as a consequence, um, we were labeling gear after, I, I, you know, there's a lot of researchers at, at this uh, field site, so our dive gear, a lot of it looks similar. So we labeled it all. And there was another guy named Anderson, who's actually now a professor at um, um, San Diego State, Todd Anderson. So his stuff was already all labeled, labeled Anderson, my last name. Like, well, how am I going to write something unique? And there's a whole long story, which I can tell you later if you really want to know. But so my nickname got to be Satan Boy after this. <laughs> so all of my dive related friends call me to this day Satan Boy. So, so that wasn't an attempt to network, <laughs> but um, that that cadre of my research diving underwater marine biology folks they most of them call me satan boy so that's sort of one layer of networking another layer of networking is down here which is at this this uh kind of infamous meeting that we had in la paz in southern um, baja california sur and this was uh this was uh, then a professor at moss landing marine lab a guy named greg Kaye, and he's given his presidential address, and long story short, for details I will not go into, because it's inappropriate, um, uh, I made him wear a sombrero and, and consume something when he was given his presidential address, and it became this very funny thing, and then a lot of people knew me from that. That wasn't my intention to have people know who I was, but a whole nother cadre of people know me from doing silly things like that in, in hotel ballrooms. Um, and then over there, in 2013 is my friend, uh, Professor Steele, who's now a, uh, a professor at Cal State Northridge, and he is the, one of the links between all of this, right? So networking can take many different forms. Networking can be intentional. Networking can also be unintentional, right? So, so we build our, our, our awareness, or people um, come to recognize us from various things that we do, and you guys should be thinking about this as much as possible now because you're trying to build your own networking and laying your own foundation for the people that you might reach out to in your career when you want advice, when you need help, whatever the case may be. Um, and it's also true that one of your key networking uh, sources are people right in this room and people right in the ESRM program. Not that we're all best friends, not that we're all going to, you know, go get an apartment together and that kind of stuff. But several of these folks you guys are talking to now and that you've been friends with over the last couple years, they'll be important folks for you. So over there on the right is at a place, this crazy uh, restaurant that no longer exists in, in LA. And those are two of my colleagues from graduate school. And those of you that have come with us in New Orleans or are coming with us, you'll meet these guys in New Orleans too. So these are folks that, um, I've known for 20 years, or yeah, more, probably yeah, more, I guess. And we still actively collaborate. We still actively help each other. So you can have this networking both by laying the groundwork and reaching out to people that you maybe don't interact with frequently, but your network is also the folks that you do interact with um, more, more frequently and have a closer connection with. All of that stuff goes into networking. Um, and 
this is just one quick example. So these, this is a, um, the last Ocean Protection Council science advisory team I was on. I'm on another one now, and the name is slightly different. Slightly different, but suffice it to say, all these folks that I'm interacting with um, uh, professionally, uh, all of them I'd worked with when I was your guys' age, or, or almost all of them I'd worked with when I was your age. The first guy, Rich Ambrose, he was, I worked for him as an undergrad, and then when I went to graduate school, he was a, basically a co-advisor for me. Kathy Boyer, she was in graduate school with me. Mark Carr was a postdoc when I was an undergrad, and it goes on and on and on. And so what I'm trying to say is sometimes you guys don't even know these relationships that you're building um, might yield value in the future, but we, never, we just never know how the future's gonna unfold, so it's great to, as much as we can, um, take note of these folks and, and, and have an understanding. She does this, he does that, he seems good at that, she seems good at this, and that can come back and help you guys in, in many ways as you go down your career paths, whatever they are. So let's talk about your guys' network. So um, what's your personal network, you guys, right now? Friends and family, okay, what else? For previous and current, I'm sorry. Employers. Employers, okay, great. Yeah, so so people that are paying you or employing you, good. What else? Fellow students at CI. Right, so fellow students in this room or, or elsewhere on campus. Organizations or churches. Or sure, yeah, so, so sports, Scouts. church, you know, religious groups, um, 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 uh, rec leagues, stuff like that. Yeah, faculty, absolutely. So all these things are potentially in your network, right? It's not just, not just the person whose business card you got at the conference, right? Um, you, know, we, you guys each have huge networks. Um, so here's a question for you guys, true or false? Networking means meeting other people. No. Well, think about it for a second. Don't like tell me the answer, just think for 10 seconds. Okay, who says true, raise your hand. That's what it says. Networking. <laughs> Networking means meeting other people? Question mark. It should be a, a statement. That was baloney. This is lame. I should fix that. It's more than. Okay, so it was a statement without a question mark. Who says true? Got to raise your hand for real. One, two, three, four, five. <laughs> Monica's really enthusiastic about. It. Okay, so then the rest of you guys say it's false. Yeah. Yeah. So those. So Monica, since you did two hands, why do you say it's true? Okay. Networking. Okay, so clearly meeting people is absolutely part of networking, oh, no. totally. Yeah. Yeah. The folks that right. said false, who, who said false? <laughs> Why? Like getting your name across okay. conversations and stuff. Okay, so finding out about people maybe. Yeah. Not necessarily, so, so that might be part of networking, not just the, the act of talking to him or her clearly is, is part of it, but, but it's not restricted to that. Okay, so again, we see this a lot of times when, when you guys go out to go hunt your jobs, right? Which is that, of course, you want to meet someone, and, and again, that has value, that's part of it. But mo many times we find out about a job that might be interesting to you, or a career option that might be interesting to you, not from the person that, that is owning the firm or, or, or doing the hiring, but it's somebody that heard that she's doing the hiring or that he's looking for someone that's like X. You get you know what I'm saying? So it's, it's really building, so it's really this. So here's you guys, <laughs> the super lame, super lame illustration I did. Wow, very complex. Um, and, so, and so, yes, this is my, this is Dr. A's Social Networking 101, which I know nothing about. So anyway, so here you go. So here's you. So this is the idea of networking, meaning you talking to people, right? So that all, obviously all these smiley faces are connected to these other smiley faces, yeah? So, there, so you talk to person A. You talk to person B. You talk to person C. And that is part of it. But really, networking is not just that. It's also the, the sphere. You know, think of it as a, as a rock that we threw in the water and it hit and out come those ripples and those ripples ripple and those ripples reflect off of the rock and whatever and it gets fairly complex. So um, if, let's say, the light blue guys over there know about a job opportunity, 
and they happen to mention it to dark blue person, right? right. They didn't meet you, but if that, person, if that blue person in turn knows that you're looking for whatever, a job in air quality monitoring or, or, or something, right? They can go tell you. So that's a key part of networking. It's not just who you know, it's who you know who they know and they know and all that, blah, 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 blah. So there's a whole science that's built up around this um, called network theory or, or, or networking theory. Um, information transfer, there's all kinds of stuff here. And I would just say that uh, lots of people study this and it's actually been a really, one of the few good things that social media is good for is providing data for folks that study how people are connected to each other. And it's helped push the field forward and, and illustrate um, uh, the importance of nodes, I would say. So it's not so much that you know everybody, but ideally that you know someone that knows a lot of people. That's really the key, the key thing. And so I'm gonna show you guys some old data of mine um, because of course, when these social media companies.com you know, things spin up. They're all like super cool, man, and we're about empowering you. And then once they get rich, they're like, ah, oh, screw that, we're gonna hold it all. So this is a feature called um, InMaps from, that would look at your LinkedIn network and would map it out for you. And so I have a lot of data for a while, and then they said, oh no, no, we want you to pay for that. So then you can't, you can't really get at this anymore. So, but, but it'll prove the concept. So here we go. So this is my LinkedIn, uh, network when it was small, when it was, when I knew 386 people, okay? So what I want you just to do, I'm gonna step through some, some iterations. I just want you to look at the pattern here. So the way this particular program graphs stuff, it puts me at the center, and then um, the uh, size of the circle represents how many connections that particular node has, and then the colors just represent some di different natural groupings that the that the program uh, uh, found, okay? Make sense? So here we go, so I'm in the middle and, and oh sorry, also the, the length of the, and so the line means that that node knows that other one. So those two people are connected themselves through social media, right? So obviously everybody's, by definition, has to be connected to me here, because this is my network, my, my first order network. But then, um, uh, the connections that are between two dots that don't go through me means that those two folks know each other. Yeah, make sense? Okay, so here we go. So let's watch the patterns. This one I had 386 connections. Here's when I had 450 connections. Here's when I had 638 connections. Here's when I had 774 connections. Here's when I had 957 connections. So in any pattern showing up to you guys? What, 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 was what? Geography. Bottom left. Okay, so Jackie thinks something's up with the orange, dark orange group. Yeah, lower left. Okay, so, so, so one guesstimate is unrelated career field. One guesstimate is family. And any other guesses or, does that make sense? It looks, it looks different, doesn't it? It looks really far away. So, so, so in terms of networking space, it's distinct. Yeah, there's obviously a distinct pink area and a distinct blue area, but there, there's some overlap there, right? This, this looks, you know, this is pink and this is blue and this looks kind of purpley, right? So they're kind of blending in and, and these guys, you know, th this guy's maybe a little distinct, but, but by and large, these guys look relatively close together in connectedness. Yeah. These guys look pretty darn far away from the rest of those. Uh, family right. With all the other groups, kind of. right. Okay. Good. Good. So here's 1,200, and and so the so it's getting more so. Yeah. So these guys are getting more sort of. Again, there's still these spheres. There's the green sphere, the dark blue sphere, the pink sphere, but but they're still kind of all in this state space. And then this orange group is getting weirder and weirder, right? Or at least getting more distinct and more distinct. Government. Okay, here's 2056. It's going way farther away. And so here's the answer. So, so uh, let's look at these colors and we'll end up with the dark orange. So uh, green, coast, people that do coastal marine management outside of California. 
This is people that do coastal marine management inside California. Pur purple do terrestrial things. Uh, these light blue do fisheries management in particular. Uh, this is California uh, government and California NGOs. This is CSUCI. So this orange group over here are other faculty, okay. are other staff members, students, could be students, mostly not students. Mostly here is, at least at this point, is mostly uh, or what's driving that, and the students tend to be more like over in here, uh, these guys are way out here. So that tells me that if, if you guys are interested in coastal marine management, coastal science, you know, uh, uh, mountain lion management, fisheries management, this and that, other, other CSUCI professors, hmm, maybe not as connected to that world as others, right? So on average, one of these, what is this blue? The Coast, Coastal Marine Management people, some, some random person that, does, that works in that particular field that's connected socially to other uh, professionals is more likely to be tied into the opportunities that might, um, you guys might be interested in, right? Than the, the average CSUCI uh, person, right? To be sure, there's a couple oranges in here and oranges in here, and, right? So it's not perfect, but by and large, on average, other CSUCI people, maybe that's not gonna help your networking. Yeah? So, so I'm connected well with these guys, but the average person isn't. So just because someone's in your, in your neighborhood, of course you should have them in your network, but they're not necessarily gonna give you as much benefit as someone, out, as, as someone new, as someone different. Make sense? Yeah, no? Yeah? Okay, good. All right. So I would suggest you guys thinking about, or think about networking as, you know, an example over here of one of these sort of um, uh, impressionistic paintings done not with, not with a blend of color, and not with a merging of color, but rather, you know, little teeny dolly, tiny distinct dots of color that if you're zoomed in, it's maybe hard to see the picture. But as we zoom out, it actually makes a coherent, in this case, a dude with a riding crop or whatever, and, and a handlebar mustache, because that's the most relevant thing to your career I could apparently find. Um, so really, this networking is, is, while you might want to put some time into thinking about it, it's really this informal collection of all of your contacts. Like, like you guys were saying before, your folks in your club, folks at your church, folks at your, your, your you know, recreational hobbies and all that stuff coming together. And that's what's really going to be your, your great data mining effort when it comes to you looking for the job, looking for a place to go to school, for grad school, looking for a place to find an apartment, all that kind of stuff. And so all these things, I would say, fall into this. So, so um, sometimes it's kiss and butt, which hopefully you don't do too much of that, but let's be honest, sometimes that helps. Um, uh, you know, this, this notion, of, this notion of, uh, of, of one person that's just gonna make everything work for you. Sometimes it does mean talking to good old boy networks, right? Ideally, it would be nice to say that doesn't exist, it, they still exist. What does that mean? You guys, oh my God, I'm getting so old. So good old boy network means is a term that you used to have to know someone to get in somewhere. So a classic example that many of you guys might be interested in would be the National Park Service. They will tell you it's all about just, you know, sending a great application. Uh, no. A lot of it is knowing who, is knowing someone at that particular park, someone that can give you an, an entree into that group of folks, right? So to be sure, not every it's th things are getting better, but but the idea is the idea is right that that these old folks and the traditional thing is some old you know power wealthy um, guys at the head of the company usually guys right they control who gets hired etc. So th things are getting better all the time, but it's not perfect right. And don't delude yourself into thinking that that all things are perfect and 
and, and if I just show up, things will be great. There are times when getting some insight or connection to the power of folks that control the hiring of the company or whatever makes sense. Schmoozing is some of this, connecting is some of this, Six Degrees of seven, Kevin Bacon is some of this. Um, <laughs> it is, right? I mean, let's just be honest, it is, it is. So, so, so what we want to be focusing in on though is not, is not the schmoozing part, although again, sometimes schmoozing helps, but, but we want to focus on being more directed with your guys' networking. So again, all that informal stuff totally plays a role, but you can also start to now work specifically on building your network, finding out who are those nodes, who are the ones that are really connected well to job opportunities, other, other potential things you might want to get. Yeah, so conferences are one way. Um, so I would say it's important to, th so your network, think of it as an adult, okay? So it's not just about what are they gonna do for me? What are they gonna do for me? What are they gonna do for me? It's, it's how does this network move us both forward, right? If you're just simply someone sucking up information and running away, that's not, long term, that's not gonna bring as much reward to you as possible. If instead you maybe a lot of times suck information out of that network, but if you're also sometimes helping others, right? Giving them advice, commenting on their stuff, giving them suggestions, then it becomes more of a two-way street. Then you become a more valuable node. And so then other people are gonna attract you as well. So think of networking it truly as a two-way street. Even though right now, you guys are just starting your career, you're probably thinking, I don't know much or I don't know many people. Really do think of it that way. And a give and take is, is the way uh, long term to build the most value and the most worth ultimately for for you as we go forward. Uh, as you do more networking, that's going to lead to more job leads again, both now and five years from now. So don't think of everything as just what am I getting out of it today? Think of it as building your network for the long term. Um, and, and sometimes that's jobs, sometimes it's just suggestions. Hey, I'm thinking about going to the consulting world. Do you guys know what firm do you, what, what firms do you guys trust? Or, or who's the more reputable broker of this, of this particular resource? Um, also, it's not gonna explode overnight. There was a great article, I think I posted this on our ESRM uh, Coda, our Scoopit site. There was a great article two weeks or so ago in the New York Times about um, Twitter mining and about these guys that, you know, all these you know, B-level celebrities have, you know, a million followers and how they're basically, they're all bought. So there's companies that you pay for followers of your social media and, or, or network and then you suddenly look super popular, but it's a fake network. It doesn't bring any value to it. They're all bots. They're all, they're all you know, click things and automate it. They're not bringing real value. The way you grow your network is slowly, slowly, slowly over time that, again, as you guys are starting now in your junior position, it might seem like it's taking forever, but pretty soon, within a year, two, three, um, it can be really uh, useful. But don't expect it to explode overnight. And again, think of it as ultimately pulling together a diverse, a diverse group of experts that you guys can consult when, when needed and or you guys can help when needed. Suggestions for you guys targeting folks to, to add to your network, again, either formally in a social media type context or just in your Rolodex or in your, in your list of contacts, right? Both, all these things matter. One, think about competitors. Think about other folks. If you guys are working for a, a consulting firm, think about bringing some folks that are in another consulting firm. They, you know, maybe they'll say, no, I don't wanna talk to you, but at least having some contact info, a point of contact, would be useful. Maybe you're gonna get a job uh, a candidate in a couple years that worked at that place. You can call up this person, hey, was he or she a good worker? Was, were they a good team player? That kind of thing. Again, like-minded folks and people that think differently. Both of those will broaden and increase the value of your network. Don't just go to friends, don't just go to folks that, that uh, are interested in exactly the same thing as you. 
Similarly, not just right here, let's assume you guys are gonna stay in Ventura County, of course get folks from Ventura County in your network, but also folks from Orange County, folks from Seattle, right? Other places like that will add diversity and value to your uh, uh, networking. One of the easiest ways you guys already uh, called out would be through um, professional associations. So formal groups. So some of you guys might want to join one of these groups, Ecological Society of America, Society for Ecological Restoration, um, different plant groups, different advocacy groups, things like that. That's a great way to start to build um, connections. Um, it's also great for you, if you don't know someone, to ask for an introduction. That's totally great. Hey, um, I'm really interested in meeting you know, Dr. X, and I, I don't know her, but I think you do. You know, at some point, next time you guys are having lunch or something, would you mind introducing me or send, sending an introductory email? That can be a really useful way to get introduced to someone, to have one of your, an, an inter intermediary formally introduce you and, and, and uh, say, hey, you guys might like each other, that kind of thing. Uh, and then just like competitors, the other ones that, so the italicized ones are here, I think that you maybe don't think about too much. The non-italicized ones here are ones that I think you guys are more typically thinking of. But um, uh, folks that do complimentary stuff, so if you're doing, um, if you're working for a firm that's going to do, you know, putting out wildfires, complementary services might be someone that's going to come in and do revegetation afterwards, soil stabilization, stuff like that. Advocacy groups can be really um, in the know, some of them, um, in terms of what's coming up, what's going on. Government agencies, absolutely. Elected officials can be really good. And then things from more, your more um, social uh, uh, interactions as opposed to traditional career or, or professional stuff. When you do reach out to these folks, positive, smile. Don't be like most of you guys are sitting right now in the audience looking at me, right? <coughs> Breath, f full, full chest of air, sitting up straight, a little bit of a smile, slightly leaning forward. Hey, how's it going, right? Not schmarmy and like, mm -hmm. But right, a little bit, a little semi-smile, right? Eye contact, that makes a huge difference when we're trying to meet folks, right? Hey, how's it going, blah, blah, blah. Um, and again, be sincere. Part of this notion of you guys working on your elevator talks, because I know you're all practicing them every week like you're supposed to, so I'm glad you guys are doing that, is, is so that you guys are less nervous, so that you guys make use of your limited time but also so that you can craft it, right? And, and you can work on, on, on being sincere. This is what I worked on. I'm interested in, in your take on that, right? Totally legit. Doesn't sound like a sales pitch. Doesn't sound like somebody's you know, trying to get you a bunch of money or something like that. It sounds, it sounds honest. And you, and you wanna truly be honest with these um, uh, efforts to reach out to people. Again, just like we mentioned in our um, elevator talk, <coughs> ideally when you reach out to folks, you want to know what to say. Of course, you're gonna sometimes bump into someone at the, at the grocery store and just start talking, but generally speaking, it's good to have a plan and objective. So, hey, I was working on, <coughs> working on this and I was wondering if you, know, uh, you had any insight. It'd be great if we could chat sometime, you know, just like the stuff you're working on in your elevator talk. Um, also, because you are working and understanding these people, it's not just about you barfing out info. Try to work on the majority of your meetings with folks being a good listener, right? Whether that's via email, whether that's via the phone, whether that's via face-to-face, -face, whatever. Honestly hear what he or she is saying and then you'll be able to react. Sometimes we're so nervous and we're so like, uh, uh, you know, and it's, it's a natural thing. We're, we're trying to, we feel nervous. So a lot of times we try to, sometimes, we, some people either like get totally quiet or other people try to fill in every gap of silence with, with their talking. And what I'm saying is take a breath, as hard as that can be at times, but take a breath and let's, let's let those folks introduce themselves, tell them about, tell us about themselves, right? And so you guys talk, but also make sure 
you are listening. Next, when we're reaching out, say thank you. What did I just say? Thank you. What did I just say? Thank you. Oh, wait, thank you still. Say thank you. Almost none of you will do this. Almost none of you will do this. What are you supposed to do? Thank you. Say thank you. Say thank you. What are you supposed to do? Say thank you. Thank you. All right. So if I can't tell you how much you will be distinguished if you say, if you follow up with an appreciative thing, even if it's a brief two, three sentence email. It'll make a million times more difference if you, and now this wouldn't be just saying hi in the grocery store, but, but when you're, so you meet someone at, a, at a, a conference and maybe they take a few minutes and you're like, yeah, so I'm just wondering, can you give me some tips on this thing or whatever? They take a few minutes to work with you. If you get an interview, even if you don't get that job, if you get an interview, if you get a call back, hand write a thank you note neatly. Almost nobody does this and you will stand out tremendously from the pack. I, I know people that have gotten a job, several of your, your uh, previous students, some of our alumni have gotten jobs because they didn't get that job, but they, wrote, they, they handled themselves very professionally <coughs> and honestly represented themselves in the job interview. Didn't get the job interview, they wrote back, boom, and that left, I know for a fact that's left an impression in the mind of the, the person doing the hiring. And that job you know, didn't go to them, but you know, six months later, nine months later, another job pops up and you stick in their head. I wanna make sure I send this job thing to her because you know, maybe she's already got a job or maybe she doesn't want it, but I really, she, she seemed like a, a really professional person, had her stuff together. I wanna see if she's still available, right? Makes a tremendous impression. And even if in the future they don't hire you, if you reach out to them in the future, if you have a networking question, hey, you know, I was wondering, you know, what are most of your recent hires making roughly? What's the salary range? You know, that person's gonna be much more likely to respond to you because they see you as a respectful, you know, mature, self-composed person. So say thank you often, right? Say thank you often. It, it really does make a huge difference. Um, next, make sure that when you're having one of these networking things, you're meeting someone, you're having a talk, um, always, just like we said before, make sure it's not just a one-way street. Hey, if there's anything I can help you out with, you know, please let me know. You know what I mean? Maybe it means some help in the field. Maybe it means giving them some perspective on some of your scholarship, whatever. But again, making it as much of a, making it more of a, of a true collaboration as opposed to a one-way street makes a big difference. And then lastly, this isn't natural for some of us, right? And totally get that practice. It's totally cool. So, so the first, don't imagine the first time you're going to tick all these boxes, do all this stuff. No, it takes, takes some practice reaching out and, and, and trying to build new relationships. But if you guys do it more often, you will indeed get better, I, I promise, I promise. Other, other, other suggestions? Do other people have any other networking tips that they've, they've found over the years or they've, they've tried that seems, seem to work well? Wait, hold on, Monica. Let's say you're gonna, like, let's say you don't like the job you're doing right now. Yeah. And you're, you're thinking about quitting, or maybe you're quitting for school, whatever. Uh -huh. Always leave with a good note. Like, always don't. Oh, right. Like, don't burn your bridges. Yeah. 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 So don't ever do that. Yeah, absolutely. So, so <clears throat> I mean, there might be some times when you want to just exit if right. the person's <laughs> been doing like illegal things or something like that. But that's not, that's not most of our cases, right? Let's be honest. Mostly it's that you know, we, got, we wanted to move on for one reason or another. Um, and as long as there isn't something untoward or illegal or whatever going on, Monica's right. No need to make an enemy, right? So, so in the case of when you're, when you're getting ready to leave, most of our paid jobs, you know, they ask for two weeks notice. Ideally, give them a little bit more, right? Hey, you know, just so you know, this isn't about you guys, but I really need to take some more time off to do some school stuff. It's not about you, but my significant other got a job, and so we're going to be moving to you know X. So I'm going to be you know need to be vacating. I, you know I'm really sorry. You know that kind of stuff. 
makes a huge difference rather than just disappearing all the time. Any other ideas you guys have? Do you ever want, like, want to be like the squeaky wheel kind of? Like, cause, yeah. um, it all depends like, on what you So g give me more, so squeaky wheel, give me more yeah, context. So, like, I, like, I was like volunteer at the National Park, uh -huh. and it took me like forever to like get that position. So like at first I just like emailed the park. Right. And then they never replied back. And right. Then, and like right. just kept on like constantly kind of getting their attention. That's, yeah. that's how you got the job. Yeah. So, like, you kind of so I wouldn't call that squeaky wheel. I would call that persistence. Yeah. So and being persistent, yeah. persistent totally is a, is a good thing. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's the right way to go about it. I wouldn't email them today and then email them tomorrow right. and then email them tomorrow <laughs> night, right? I would start out, and again, we're all, many of us are super busy, and, and, and our, our colleagues in the agencies and stuff are overworked and all that stuff, right? right. So I would send off you know, an inquiry or a, or a, or a you know, hello or whatever, but I didn't hear anything. I'd follow up in you know, a week or two. If I didn't hear anything, I'd follow up again, right? And, and so I, but, but I wouldn't immediately start with that. And that's what I would call a squeaky wheel. A squeaky wheel is someone's like, hey, you didn't do this. You didn't do this. Hey, you didn't do this. You didn't do this. And that's and that and that is that has value. There are so if there's a uh, if we had a safety situation, if our fire extinguisher wasn't charged and we called up and we said, hey, yo, can you guys charge a fire extinguisher? I said, yeah, okay. And they didn't do it. You call them up again in a couple of days and they didn't do it. That's when I would start kind of, hey, yo, dude, this thing, if there's a fire, we're in trouble, right? Or, or, or something like that. That's, I think, a total useful time to be the squeaky wheel. Some people won't do that. But if it's something like that that's really important or, or for, the, for the, the project or the, or the safety of people, or whatever, of course that can be a good thing. And in retrospect, at least most folks think we look back and go, hey, you know what? She was right. That we needed to do that, that action. And I'm actually glad she was bugging us because otherwise I'd been so busy I wouldn't have gone and done that. But again, the part of, about reaching out, I don't, wouldn't call that squeaky wheel, I would just call that persistence. So my son is working on his Eagle Scout project right now and he's doing it in the state park and the rangers are always busy. And so I was talking to him last week and I was like, hey, so what happened, you know, where are we? He's like, oh, I emailed the guy. I was like, oh, okay, and what do you say? Well, he hasn't gotten back to me. And I was like, okay, well, why don't you, um, do you have his uh, phone number? Yeah. Did you call him? Well, no, it's the weekend. Yeah, I know, but maybe you could just send him a text, and if it's his office phone, it'll just bounce back, right? If it's a landline, it will come back. But if it goes through, you know it's a cell phone, and then it'll be there whenever he checks it on you know, Monday or whatever. And so he, he sent a respectful text and magically they got, they're having a meeting on like Tuesday or something, right? So, so, we don't, so I wouldn't call that squeaky wheel. I would just call that you know, persistence and not trying to bug people on their off hours or whatever, but, but you know, otherwise that, that email probably was lost in his, in his inbox or whatever. Cool, other, other networking tips you guys have? Of course, yeah, so, so um, professional social networking stuff, you know, the Instagrams, maybe not so much those, but, but the, the ones like LinkedIn or something where you can actually have more of a dialogue, sure. Oh man, I saw that thing you did or that post or the whatever, it was really interesting. Have you seen this one, right? So, so the just one way is just, oh yeah, like or thumbs <coughs> up or whatever, right? And like, oh, that's great. But even better, if you say, ah, oh, that was really cool, I really liked it. Did you see this article on that topic, right? Then it becomes, oh, hey, she knows, she knows about this topic, right? She, she, so those kinds of things, um, both are okay, but the second one is even better, right? You're, you're again, building, you seem valuable and, and worthwhile for that person, for you to be in, in his or her network. So that's good. Other, other thoughts about networking? Oh, excellent. Let's go to the meeting tips because Finn is bringing up meeting tips. Excellent segue. All right, for sure. Good. So, okay, first, so when we're having a meeting, it could be an interview, it could just be having coffee or whatever the, the dealio is. Um, first and foremost, um, never, ever, 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 ever arrive late. You're done. Uh, 
you want to be there early and you don't need to show up there an hour and a half early, right? But you want to drive to the place, get to the place, get parked, do you know whatever the deal you is, lock up your skateboard, whatever, and have a couple minutes. One for you just to pause and take a breath and just be chill, right? But you want to walk in. If they're a few minutes late, that's cool, right? You wait for them. You don't want to have them waiting for you. And it doesn't matter that the traffic sucks or that it was raining, you need to account for all of that, right? It's on you to get there early. Don't speed or get an accident, but you know, but you need to plan for that. Secondly, you wanna dress professionally. If you're not sure, go a little bit more nice than you think you should. It virtually never causes a problem. So did I tell you guys a story about, did I tell you guys my story about uh, the, the, the Ecological Society of America meeting with the dressing? So first and foremost, people see you guys, or, or excuse me, they read your resumes and they see environmental scientists. Oh jeez, granola, a lot of fleece, right? Probably got some kind of vest product on, probably gonna, you know, hacky sack or frisbee, probably got a dog somewhere, right? All these, let's be honest, that's what's happening, right? A lot of people that's going through their mind, right? You, yeah, yeah, hasn't shaved, Daniel, right? Uh, we're, we're, checking out, we're hitting all the Daniel box, no, come on, okay. So, um, so, so, here's the deal. Here's the deal. You guys are professionals, right? You guys comport yourself as a professional. Doesn't matter if you're a tree hugger, doesn't matter if you're this or that, you, in the context of our professional lives, you are an objective scientist. You are a person that's gonna objectively interpret the situation, whether it's a policy thing, doing some education thing, whatever, right? So we wanna dress professionally, not because I'm telling you how to dress, because I wanna make sure that you are perceived as a professional, right? So when it comes time to the first meeting, you're gonna be erring on the side of a little bit more dressed up, right? Again, doesn't mean it's a, a suit and tie necessarily, but you want to be better. So here's a story I tell. So uh, this is, this is I'm at, I have my, um, my then technician that I had just hired at, at, at Stanford and she came from UC Santa Cruz. So her husband was still at UC Santa Cruz. She got a master's degree there. And uh, we were at this professional meeting called the Ecological Society of America, one of the largest professional groups for people that study critters uh, in the US. So this annual meeting, it's like five, 6,000 people, right? So it's a huge national meeting, massive numbers of folks. And I, by and large, didn't, so she came from the terrestrial world, I came from the marine world. I didn't know many of the terrestrial ecologists that it were in her, her spheres. And so we're out there at the meeting, and then uh, she says, hey, we're going out to dinner. I want you to come out to dinner with my friends from UC Santa Cruz, and we're gonna, we're gonna go, and you know, I'll introduce you to everybody. Okay, great. So we're gonna meet out at the lobby at whatever it was, five o'clock or something. This is in uh, Tucson, Arizona. Okay, great. So, so we go and we, we uh, you know, meet the lobby, and there's me and then all the rest of them. And they all knew each other, and they're all friends. There's like 20 of them, right? So they're all like, first name basis, they've known each other for years, and there's me, the weirdo, right? And so, uh, so we get together, where are we gonna eat? Who is it? Well, you know, I'm vegan, and I'm like this and that. So there's this whole discussion about who can't eat what, and wheat, and all that gluten stuff, and whatever. And so they, somehow they decide on Thai. So somehow the magic thing was Thai. And so, so somebody knows there's this Thai restaurant, so somebody, so my, my, my friend starts leading the group with this other person that knows where we're going. So they're walking up ahead, and there's a ton of people, right? It's a massive meeting. And so we just start walking, everybody's talking to each other, I don't know anybody, and so I'm walking along. And, and, uh, and what I always forget is I always forget, I leave my name tag on in, in meetings, right? Which normally hangs right here in your chest. And usually, as soon as you walk out of a session, most people whoop, whip off their tags, and I always space and forget. And so we're walking down the street, and nobody has their name tags on, so I have no idea if these, right, who these people are. And I should just say that they're very nice people, all but one guy, but they're very nice, <laughs> but they're all in uh, flip-flops, Tevas, sort of ripped up shorts. This one guy has this massive t-shirt full of holes, 
Um, like literally, right? And then the meat, like stained shirt. And you know, I don't want to judge people, but like, really, dude, this is how you're meeting your colleagues. And uh, and so so I know of all people, I should be judging, but whatever. So so we're walking, and we get to this one corner. And now there's so many of us, and there's some people in the street that we're kind of spaced out over a block or so. So my friend is way in front. I'm like, you know, she doesn't have time to introduce me to these people. I'm just going to introduce myself. So I started going, hey, how's it going? My name's Sean. And I started, and people, oh, you know, I'm blah, blah, blah. And we're saying hi and everything. And we're going around. And I get to like the fourth or fifth person, and it's this dude who is in a skanky t-shirt and skanky pants, which I'm not judging at this point, right? And he shakes my hand and he looks down his nose at me, literally, he was pretty tall, and he says, uh, huh, where are you from? Oh, Stanford University. That explains how you dress that way. That explains why you're dressed that way. And then he turns his back and walks away without saying what his name was. And I was like, what a douchebag, right? I mean, like, what? So he looked at my clothes and apparently to him, I wasn't signaling that I was hippie enough, right? And so therefore I couldn't join his tribe. <laughs> literally, literally, literally that was what was going on. So, so you know, of course, one time in a hundred that might happen. You might go to a consulting firm and you might have a collared shirt on and they might all have t-shirts and they might be saying like, what a jerk, right? You're, you're, you're too state. 99% of the time that won't happen, right? 99% of the time you're gonna look professional and we want to be professional. So dressing is, is part of it, right? Now, that doesn't mean that you have to necessarily wear a fancy dress or a suit and tie every single time you go to the firm, but those first meetings, if we don't know what the appropriate dress code is, you're gonna go a little bit nicer than you think it might be, right? And it will not hurt you. Um, okay, moving on. Uh, in terms of what we do when we're having these meetings with Folks, um, uh, oh yeah, sorry, right, so I skipped one ahead. Uh, so um, a lot of, now this, this would be more of an, a, in a professional meeting context. One of the best places to meet people is, and I'm not, I'm not advocating substance abuse or anything like that, but one of the best places to meet people is in front of the bar. Everybody comes, whether they have an alcohol or not, getting a Coke, getting a water, everybody comes to the, to the watering hole, as it were. And in professional meetings, could be poster sessions, could be whatever, that's where people are, or where the cookies are, or what, you know, wherever the, that focal point is, that's, a, that's where people are gonna be attracted to. And so, if I just wanted to meet someone, that, and I, it didn't matter where I stood, I would probably try to pick um, one of those situations. Sometimes, You'll have tickets to get a drink or a soda or whatever it is. Other times, a lot of times now, it's no host bar, so you gotta pay for your beer. If you're hanging out with someone, hey, can I get you a beer? Hey, can I get you a coffee? Hey, can I get you a tea, right? And, and you take advantage that, you know, hey, let me get that, and then you get the next one or whatever, you know, stuff like that. Be the first one to offer. That is a good thing. Um, next is, when we're trying to meet people, and again, in a meeting context, this isn't so much Finn's example, but this is more in a larger group, don't get stuck. It's very easy to get stuck sometimes talking to the <laughs> person that just wants to talk to you, and, and, and that could be fantastic relation for you. But if you're getting into it, and you're like, oh, this person is not really, give, I don't think this person's gonna necessarily yield a lot to me. Be super nice and cordial. Excuse yourself, I gotta go hit the bathroom. I gotta go meet somebody here. And try not to get stuck, because it can be very easy to get stuck in conversation. And that whole meeting opportunity to meet other people, you, you can perhaps get trapped by, by a talker or whatever it is. So, so having a plan um, helps you get around the room. Um, when we are talking, maybe with the only exception being of that person that's sucking you in after the first 15 minutes, right? Like, oh my God, I gotta talk to somebody else. Um, focus, right? Eyeball to eyeball. Look at him or her and really truly be engaged in the conversation. Don't be looking over their shoulder. Who's the next person I want to talk to? Who's it? Like, that comes off as lame and, and very, it looks very poorly on yourself. So when you are talking with someone, do be fully engaged with him or her. And I already said the thing about stand by the food or beer. Um, cool. Okay, just like before, after your interview or after the meeting, after Sage or whatever it is, um, 
make notes. Don't just get the person's card or whatever, make notes. I met this person, say what the meeting is, say what the date is, write down what his or her expertise was, and do this when you're sitting in the car before you turn the ignition on. Do it the first thing, because if you don't, you will forget, I guarantee. Okay, so this was a lady that was really interesting that was working in Hawaii. This was the guy that, that had that new method for X. Or this is that person that was just going to work for that new consulting firm named at, you know, the firm named whatever, and they were thinking they might need a hire in six months, right? Write that stuff down. Actively put it down. Um, and then... So you don't do anything during the meeting, though? Uh, oh, you can. I mean, it's not, it's not bad. I mean, if, if, if they're saying something really, it's like, oh, let me jot that down. But, but in any event, you want to debrief yourself. You want to pause, go back over. They might say, hey, you know, Dan, you should talk to this guy. Of course, I'm going to write that guy's number down. But, you know, you want to say, oh, this person liked dogs. This person was really, um, seemed to be really knowledgeable about water quality. You know, stuff like that, that, you, that even if you did jot something down, do a debrief with yourself and make yourself organized as to what he or she has to offer to you. Or something that would be relevant that you could, hey, you know, he's got a parrot, right? So when I email him in a week or something, I'll maybe go, hey, how's your parrot doing? You know, stuff like that, that, that means that you were actually listening to what that person had to say. Yeah? Uh, okay, and then if, if it's relevant, it's not always relevant, but if it's relevant, it's, oh my gosh, this guy said there's a job coming up in a couple weeks or something. All right, I'm gonna follow up with that person. And, and if I said I would do something, if I said I'm gonna send her my capstone poster, I'm gonna do that, right? I'm gonna put that in my calendar, make sure I send it to her tomorrow or on Friday or whatever, right? Follow up with whatever you said you would do if you're gonna do something. And uh, yeah, and then just in terms of making appointments or reaching out in the future, set a specific thing in your calendar. Hey, I'm gonna send that person an email in two weeks to check if that, if that job opportunity is available. And while this wouldn't be just bumping into someone in the meeting, if it was more of an interview type process, like we said before, send a thank you note, right? Send a handwritten thank you note. Um, and then also, after the fact, did I do a good job? It's okay if you did. What did I, oh, dude, I, I stood next to the bathroom and that sucked, right? That wasn't the place to stand. Or, or I, was, I was talking too much to that one guy and there was this other person I really wanted to talk to and I didn't get to talk into, you know, that kind of stuff. Be honest with yourself. What, okay, now I gotta remember, next time talk to, you know, talk to her for 10 minutes and then go and talk to the next person or, or whatever the case may be. Um, if you're doing a good job with this networking, reward yourself just like everything else. Oh, I'm gonna go get an ice cream or whatever it is to reward, right? Oh, that's cool, right? I'm doing a good job. Um, and that really act does help. And then again, just like critiquing yourself, um, turn that into, so I didn't do this well, next time I'm gonna try to do X specifically at that, at that next meeting. I gotta remember to bring business cards. I brought five business cards, shoot, I blew through them in the first five minutes. I got, next time I gotta bring 25 business cards or whatever it is. Cool? Make sense? Questions? All right. Um, so the tools that you guys have to do some of this networking include your business card, which you guys are going to make, uh, the business cards of others, so one, the thing you're giving out, two, the thing you're pulling in, name badges, so at a meeting uh, you might formally have this, uh, sometimes at, at corporate offices people have you know, ID badges as well. Um, uh, in the, your guys' case, case for something like Sage or our um, research symposium, um, take your, since in that case you guys are presenting something formally, if I was given a talk, I would have a handout of my talk, right? Maybe not every single slide, but a poster, I would have the whole poster printed out, right? Something I can give someone, here's what I found, here are the key findings of my research, right? Oh my gosh, this person is so together, they want me to know what she did and check it out, boom, I got this whole thing I can take back with me. So that you're helping remind that person of the killer stuff that you did or, or, or the resource that you could be for him or her. Uh, we already mentioned this, but you know, not only is it the note cards, but actually after the meeting, whatever, you can jot down on the back of most of these cards, right? Write, write some notes to yourself, the date you met the person, et cetera. Uh, any memory hooks that, oh, okay, yeah, 
she pronounces her name this way, he's the one that lives in Ventura, you know, whatever the, whatever the help is. And so there we go. Uh, we'll just touch real briefly, we're not going to go over business cards in too much detail, but real quickly, um, there's a whole range of business cards that you guys can check out. Um, and all you guys have to do for our class is make business cards. I'll give you some resources um, in the near future, but suffice it to say, uh, uh, you don't have to use any of those. You can use whatever you want. A lot of you guys will end up using some of the free ones or the ones that are free for the first 50, whatever, that's fine. But there are a whole range of business cards. I would encourage you to not just look at the free stuff or the super cheap stuff. This is the way you're gonna be presenting yourself to others. And a lot of these free services don't have as many cool options. For some of you, you might want to have a printed on recycled paper card. Some of you might want to do it on bamboo. Some of you might want to have a small card. Some of you might want to have a big card. Some of you might want to have an image on a card, right? It's, up, it's your particular style. It's what careers you're going for. And so I'm just trying to encourage you guys, there's a massive range of business cards out there. Don't just simply Google cheap business cards because you can, but I think you're gonna be artificially limiting yourself. And so I'll bring in some examples uh, next time we meet about, or maybe when uh, Shelly comes on the 26th and show you guys some examples of what you could do. But for now, you guys should, I would encourage you to start looking around. Start going through your wallet. What are some of the business cards that you remember? What leaves an impression with you? Um, is it a logo? Is it, is it a style of card? And again, you are trying to leave an impression with people. So, so by all means, a standard card is fine but you do have a, a whole range of options. Here's, here's some examples of some of our previous students. So uh, uh, an example, so here, here's a metal business card that's a bottle opener, which you know, you gotta consider your audience. Is that useful or is that something I don't wanna? Here is, a, Julie did a bookmark instead of a card, right? Trying to encourage people to use, use get her name in front of them more frequently. Here's a, uh, Michaela did a more rounded style. This is, this is a, a more standard size. So Alex Green, you might think he went with green. He went with a complimentary color. So maybe that. Uh, John did a square card. Um, Nathan did a, um, what's called a mini card. Here's another version of that mini card which has different photos on it. Um, um, yeah, so you know, there's a whole range of options all of these are potentially legitimate, right? So if you guys wanna push sustainability, if you wanna push your field experience, whatever, think about the best way to communicate that via something you'd hand someone uh, in a meeting context. LinkedIn, um, I would encourage everyone to consider getting a LinkedIn account for the social, social media networking kind of things for professional stuff. This is the most common place um, people that would offer the kind of jobs you guys are interested in, go to of any of those networks. Um, ResearchGate, this is um, a social media thing that you can only join if you're a researcher. So once you guys leave school, it'll be a lot harder for you guys to join. Mm -hmm. So you can join with your .edu email address. Once you leave and don't have that address, you might not um, be able to get in there. So you don't have to, but this is one that if you guys want to explore, check it out. It's free to have a start an account and you can put up there your research, your, your, your existing uh, you know, capstone research is a totally legitimate thing you can put in there. And then you can start joining other following research um, like, like your own or, or, or the fields you might want to follow. That's another uh, good one to check out. This tends to be more academic-y type jobs, but nevertheless still a good one for professional development. Um, and then again, meetings are some of the best places to interact. So we're gonna do that at Sage. There are other opportunities for you guys now and on, uh, on and on. Um, generally, most meetings have a discounted rate for students. And most of those meetings will extend the student rate for up to about a year after you graduate. So even though if you guys are graduating in May and the meetings in summer, generally speaking, they'll probably give you the student rate um, for registration or what have you. And here in California, we have tons of, me some meetings you have to travel away, far away for, but we have a ton here in California that you could just drive to or be next door that are fantastic opportunities for you guys to network. <laughs> uh, there was a potential fire in this one room, and so everybody came out, and 
uh, people were hanging out in the, in the lobby and people that didn't necessarily know each other were st started talking, they started meeting. So a bunch of people met people they didn't, wouldn't have otherwise met because of this silliness that was happening during the meeting. And that kind of spontaneous interaction wouldn't have happened, right? It, it doesn't really happen as easily on, on social media or, or virtually, right? Um, and it's a great place to network. So that's one of our students showing results. Uh, Andrew from some of his uh, research and meeting people. Um, meetings are on all types of shapes and sizes. By meetings here, I'm talking about all types of professional interactions. So for example, this top one there is uh, California Native Grass Association, mostly non-academics, mostly people that are just grass nerds and interested in that, so there are groups like that. In this case, the meeting was a field trip to go look at some field sites. Next one below this is a meeting up in Santa Barbara that we went to that was like a, a, a they call it a code fest, it's a different type of uh, meeting, and so instead of people standing up giving posters, it was all about ideas, people get, kicking out ideas, and most of these geeky folks are looking at their computer screens the whole time, but that's another type of meeting. And then on the bottom would be a more traditional meeting where uh, a traditional professional meeting where people come and they present, formally present some of their, some of their recent work, whether that's in you know, education or resource management or, or, or basic research, something like that. And th again, this ESA one, this is a, a big, huge, massive meeting. Uh, the, the, the Native Grass Association was probably about 30 people. The NCS one was probably about 100 of us. This ESA one is probably, like I said, 5,000, 6,000 people, something like that. And you want to make a solid first impression. Again, so here's Les, uh, who's now a tech down at UC San Diego, working on some long-term research projects there. He's a researcher there now. Um, and so he's, here he's standing. He's dressed uh, maybe fancier than he needs to be, but right, making a good impression. And yeah, don't do that. That's a professor. OK, great. All right, so I don't know why that's in there, but. Um, <laughs> Okay, so our exercise, our exercise for today, by next Sunday, uh, I want you guys, so you need to look across the table at who's across from you, and I think we're almost exactly right, except we're maybe one, so, you, no, I think we're all good. Okay, so Chad, so you and Molly go together. Okay, so you guys exchange names, write his or her name down. So right now, write his or her name down. So you're going to search for your, your partner, and then they're going to search for you, right? And so you want to start with doing their just, just type their name. You know, first, there's a raw name into Google, Bing, whatever your search engine that you prefer is. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So first do that. So see what happens when you first look their name up. Some of us have more unique names. Some of us have more common names. So start with that. Next, start adding in things that'll be more specific. So add in CSUCI, add in ESRM, add in you know, different, different things that's gonna, that are modifiers that will narrow the search. And this, hold on. And this is what you guys are gonna turn in. So you guys are gonna make a document they're gonna upload to a folder that we'll have on Google Drive. And, and that the document should have your target's name and then who did it. So, you know, uh, Daniel Cook by Sean Anderson kind of thing, okay? So what I want in that document, assuming it's not <laughs> obscene, hopefully it's not obscene, uh, don't put anything obscene in there, I don't want to say anything like that. But, um, so the first picture that you get of them, the first picture, wait, 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 everybody look up here, first picture, and the number of, um, and so where you got it, right, and, and that kind of stuff. So tell us about where you got it. And then tell us three things about his or her background, right, and where you found that out. Maybe where they went to high school, maybe, you know, whatever, whatever the dealio is. And then thirdly, are there any red flags when you search for them? Was there some that looked sketch, some that looked, mm, probably don't want people seeing this, right? You don't have to be super explicit, but enough so that the person can see what it is. And then I want to know, what's the dominant source of information? Uh, is, this, is this mostly from Facebook? Is this mostly from their CI Keys page? Is this mostly from news articles? You know, what? What's, what's the source of information about them? And you guys are going to I want you to send this to him or her, email this to them, and then also upload it to our 
um, our Google Drive. 